Hi, this is my video review of Death Frost Doom. Death Frost Doom is a horror adventure uh, from Lamentations of the Flame Princess. Uh, first of all, let me talk about um, my thoughts about uh, the undead in, in fantasy role playing. Well, sometimes undead aren't as scary as they used to be when they first came out a long, long time ago in those old school RPG adventures. Because players, uh, usually after a, a while, they understand their weaknesses, uh, how to deal with them. Oh, if it's a skeleton, use blunt weapons. If it's a zombie, use slashing weapons. Oh, it's a white, oh, uh, run, run away because it's going to drain a level out of you. So. The Undead become uh, more of a like a tactical element to consider in, in an adventure or the battlefield and they start losing that uh, mystique or sense of, of dread and mystery and uh, even worse when, when a wizard or a cleric understand how to animate dead or create undead they, they start using these undead as, as soldiers, as foot soldiers and, and tools and they start losing their charm, they, they feel more like different tools and when your party of adventurers enter uh, a certain site, a dungeon or a haunted uh, castle or whatever, you see the undead, you go, oh my god, who, who is the wizard or the necromancer or the vampire that animated all these, all these evil nasty things? And they start losing that uh, sense of, oh, why are they alive? How, 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 is, uh, how is it possible that those creatures are, are still walking if they lost all their, their muscles and, and their organs, tissues, etc.? And, but this adventure, Death Frost Doom, uh, reminds the players of the lethality and the mystery and the dread that the undead cause. L let me talk about the, the quality of the PDF. It's, it's pretty good, it's a short PDF, it, it's actually two adventures in one, but uh, the Death Frost Doom adventure is, is bigger. Uh, it's easy to navigate because it has a table of contents. And uh, it has a few illustrations just to to give you the, the mood or, or the tone of, of the setting. Well, uh, first, well, let, let me um, uh, tell you that from, from up front that if you play any of my uh, uh, play by forum games, uh, you, you should not watch this video because it has a lot of spoilers. If, if you watch this video, you're going to know everything about the Death Frost Doom adventure. So, um, but of course, if you are a game master or a referee or a dungeon master, uh, you're going to need a lot of details about what makes this adventure so special and how is it possible that uh, it brings back the, the dread and fear and horror into uh, the undead. Well, the adventure starts with the players. Uh, are, oh, oh, sorry, and this is a, a first level adventure. So, if you uh, run it for characters above, uh, let's say, uh, six or six levels, uh, seven levels up. Uh, it's going to be very easy for them and it will lose all its charm, it, its dread and its sense of hopelessness. The adventure starts off with the characters um, going up a, a mountain, a, a snowy mountain, because they heard that there's a lot of, of treasure and, and riches uh, hidden away in some sort of cult hideout. As you will know from the Lamentations of the Flame Princess adventures, uh, all sorts of, of death cults and uh, satanic cults are the center of many of the adventures, but uh, they handle it pretty well in, in, this, in this occasion. On this occasion, and the the characters uh, find uh, meet with this this old man that seems pretty insane. He's uh, just rambling on and on and and, and building this um, sort of uh, wooden tombstones uh, and he uh, carves the names of different people uh, on those tombs, tombstones and he says that he has seen these names on a big book in the culti cultist's hideout and he's trying to honor all, the, all those people that died up there sacrificed to uh, some uh, a dark god uh, and by building these tombstones or, or, or uh, pieces for, for their graves and so, uh, soon enough, the characters will try to, to go up that, that mountain to, to search the cultist's hideout to get all the loot and, and treasure they can find. And of course, the, the old man will be like, don't, don't go up there, please, stop. Um, but the characters, of course, uh, they're always looking for, 
for treasure and, and gold and they will ignore his warnings and they will go up and they will find this massive graveyard uh, just like a frozen graveyard uh, surrounded with, with all these uh, weird trees everything is petrified and this is an effect of the of the site everything that that stays there for a while uh, all, all wooden things become petrified and you have a lot of um, interesting elements uh, for example do you remind you uh, it reminds me a bit of um, Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow there's even a, a tree that if you cut it it starts to, to bleed and all through all over the adventure the, the site the adventure site it's virtually impossible for the characters to camp there without uh, suffering nightmares and, and curses the whole uh, piece of land is, is cursed and if the characters try to spend a night there they're going to, to be in for a very nasty surprise and so they will uh, move uh, through this graveyard and this adventure creates a, a great sense of, of paranoia because the player characters are always expecting something to, to come out from their graves every time I play this adventure the, the the players are always like, oh, any minute now, it's going, something's going to come out from that tombstone or something is behind that tree, some kind of ghost or, or zombie or, or maybe a skeleton uh, but nothing happens the player characters keep, keep moving on and nothing happens until they reach a, a small cabin that seems um, seems kinda normal besides the fact that many things inside are, are petrified but uh, when they enter, uh, every, there's um, crazy writing all over like you know like those rooms where, where the psychopath is writing messages all over the walls and the ceiling it's, it's ex exactly like that and it is revealed that the dark deity that the cult uh, worshipped is, was Duban Ku and the god of death and so um, the player characters find this uh, book that seems to be made out of halfling skin I think I don't remember quite right but it, it, they start um, uh, reading the pages of the book and they find all these names that have been sacrificed uh, throughout history and it's a, a mystery because it, it, it doesn't exactly say how how the cult died away how, how it, it became extinct and they find all sorts of interesting things in that cabin for example you, they find um, uh, like one of those uh, moose trophies uh, over the fireplace I think and it reminded me of, of Evil Dead you, you remember when, when Ash uh, was in the cabin and and the moose head suddenly came alive and, and started uh, talking nonsense that, that will happen or blah, blabbering things that, that's, that, that will happen if the characters are not careful and activate a sort of trap there are so, some interesting things, they find clues about the demise of another explorer that went there and, and went insane because he spent the night there uh, he, they also find a, a magical clock that alters time so there, there are a few things for the characters to to tinker and, uh, or interact with and, and keep feeling that sense of, of paranoia that something is not right the, the, the module is pretty cool because it has a lot of, of uh, detailed maps and text but just enough for the referee or game master to, to elaborate on his own descriptions because I don't like it with when it's not exactly bad but but I prefer it with when adventures don't give you like a wall of text telling you what what to say exactly oh you see this or that in front of you and here uh, Raggy just gives you um, the author James Raggy gives you a, a sort of a small paragraph detailing what what they see so you can elaborate on that and add your own flavor and style to, to the adventure and after the player characters fool around a bit and they find some very creepy things for example uh, like a painting that, that shows all of them uh, near a sort of um, undead entity in a room with a goblet uh, filled with blood I, I think they start getting this sense of dread that they shouldn't have come here but of course like all, player, uh, all char characters they are always going to be looking for gold and, and magic items and they're going to push forward and that's when things get even more creepy they go down a, a, a sort of a basement that connects with a dungeon and it's actually a maze of, of crypts it's the cult crypts uh, down the cabin and uh, yeah and it's uh, just such a huge maze or labyrinth uh, with dark corridors and and all this um, religious imagery of death and, and decay and there are um, ways for the characters to navigate this this maze but it will usually cause them some some very uh, grotesque uh, 
uh, things or, or, or prices. For example, for to open a, a door, they need to to uh, rip out a, a tooth, so as, as payment, and then they can proceed to other places. And they may also pick certain objects, thinking that they will be worth something. But uh, so a lot of them are cursed, and that's uh, they will actually turn out to be more expensive than they thought. And they start seeing all these um, uh, priest uh, quarters. There's a lot of uh, like uh, cleric cleric rooms, and they find these uh, different items that they could sell. They even find so, find some grimoires and, and books of dark magic to use and to sell. But everything has a price. They start um, uh, getting cursed as they as they touch things, and and they to go through certain doors. They have to to give some gruesome payments, as as I told you but still no one dead and then it gets even more tense when the player characters start walking inside these like vaults or or, or mausoleums underground mausoleums that that house uh, a lot of undead like hundreds of, of undead uh, adults and, and, and children and the player characters are going to be expecting all these these undead nasties to, to just uh, start walking and attacking them but nothing happens and the sense of paranoia and dread creep keeps growing and growing until the player characters reach a certain area and this area is crucial it uh, determines what's going to happen to the characters and maybe even the, the campaign world there's a sort of, of I don't know if I could call it a, a construct or maybe a sort of growth it looks like a like a coral, like a big, uh, big surface with coral-like appendages and this thing will attack any character that approaches it and of course the characters will probably start attacking it as well uh, because it actually blocks the way to another like ceremonial chamber and if the characters commit the uh, grave grave mistake of of killing or destroying this thing then all hell will, will break loose because this thing was producing a, a sort of sound I forgot to mention that throughout the adventure the characters hear this like a sort of whistle or, or whisper uh, constantly and this thing was producing that sound and that sound was keeping all of the undead uh, in a sort of sleep it reminds me a bit of the Susurus that's a, a monster of uh, Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 in Libris Mortis I think that it's a sort of uh, golem that ke keeps uh, that can fight undead producing a sound and this uh, thing is very much like it but it's it doesn't attack the undead it keeps them asleep but when the characters destroy it the undead will slowly start to to rise and they will be unaware of it they will enter the ceremonial chamber and they're going to be dealing with a cursed altar but no no enemies everything is just a trap or a curse but suddenly they will, will start hearing the noises and they will uh, appear around the, the corner and uh, look, ar look around the pick around the corner and 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 see how these all, all these zombies and undead nasty things are, are um, walking towards them and they are just too much to, to fight the characters have no possibility to beat them not even with spells there they are just so many and here it's when things get really tricky there there's just a bit of a, a slight chance of escape in a uh, upper hatch if the characters have the patience to, to I don't know uh, build a ladder or or something and, and climb up there and hack away at the snow uh, risking the dangers of, of, of uh, being uh, buried alive under the snow and and even so uh, if they manage to go up the undead uh, from the upper cemetery will also attack them so it's it's almost impossible for them to to escape this if the characters keep pushing on, they will find uh, some other undead enemies that are way beyond their, their possibilities to defeat. And they will find their only hope or chance to survive uh, uh, lies in, in uh, forming an alliance or pact with a vampire that will uh, have so certain control uh, over some of the undead. And that vampire can actually take control of about the half of the undead force and, and make it fight the other zombies, so it's a zombie versus zombie war. But the vampire is going to, to escape, the, the vampire needs help for, from the characters too, because of a sort of ritual to, to escape the, the crypt. But So if the characters uh, get out of there alive, they will escape with their lives, but maybe they release something upon the world that is even uh, worse, which is a very powerful vampire that has control over the undead. 
and even if the characters escape, the undead are going to be running loose uh, all over the country, uh, killing, destroying towns, etc. It's going to be the Walking Dead uh, pretty easily unless they take some actions, uh, some other actions beyond the scope of the adventure. So it's a very interesting adventure. Let me tell you my, my exact thoughts about it. I'll, uh, let me uh, show you uh, some of the illustrations. Some of them are, are a bit abstract. For example, this is supposed to be a part of the of the crypts, but as you can see, it's very hard to tell. You can only see a skull over there, like a skull in, uh, inside the wall. But there are some very good images as well. For example, some clear images. I have a... Uh, the image of uh, well, this is uh, this is cool, but it looks a bit cartoony. But it, it's one of the undead that comes out. But this is a very, this is probably one of the best zombie images I have, I have ever seen. It looks very nightmarish. But this is when the undead are starting to to come alive, and there we go, and look pretty nightmarish. So. Uh, Overall, it's a, it's a, I, th I really like this adventure. It's and there are very few uh, scary adventures out there, and this uh, thing, this um, situation where the characters have to uh, do, um, he they unwittingly um, release this undead menace upon the world. They they fear for their characters' lives, but they're also, they're also afraid of the hopelessness of the situation that they cannot escape unless they, they make a deal with this vampire. And and they get enough clues about what what's going on. It, it's it looks pretty random at first, and as you will know, all old school Renaissance adventures uh, sometimes have a lot of randomness uh, to them. But they get some uh, clues about what's in the crypt, what's going to happen, some very subtle and visual clues. So if the characters play it safe, they may just enter the crypt, uh, grab some cursed treasure, and and get out of there with minimal damage but uh, in most cases they will get very curious and destroy this thing and unleash hell and now let me talk about the, the other adventure which is called the tower and this is more than an adventure it feels more like a trap and I don't think it's fair to use this adventure unless you are playing a, a sandbox campaign and sh soon you will understand wh why I say this well the tower is basically a, a huge trap some uh, it happens when a character wakes up and he finds like a a key on, on his uh, chest a sort of necklace key which is the key of love and the key of love promises that there's uh, and there's a map also that there's this tower and there are great things inside the tower so the characters go to this tower and and use the key and they will start to to see a sort of legend about a king traveling to a tower to awaken a princess with a kiss and finds all sorts of riches and, and power inside that tower and the characters will foolishly start to believe oh yes this is a tower and we're going to, we're going to find a princess and, and gold inside and they start uh, getting more and more vulnerable as they go up the tower because they see through all these uh, legends and carvings uh, on the wall that they must remove their uh, uh, armor and their gear, their weapons, they must discard their weapons so they can be admitted into the upper floors because there are undead guardians on each floor and, they, and the characters will have to fight these guardians which are pretty strong for a low level character to lower, lower level character to, um, to keep going because it's, there, it's very tough to beat them, not impossible but it's going to take a heavy toll on the characters and if the characters are, are foolish enough to, to dispose of their armor and their weapons at the very top of the tower, they're going to be to find a princess, but an undead princess that instead of, of when they try to wake her with a kiss, she is going to attack them, and the undead are going to attack them as well, and uh, that's uh, and it's a very like a um, like a very creepy, bleak, uh, greedy room where the princess hides all the bones of the of the adventurers that were fooled or tricked into the tower uh, be behind uh, her sarcophagus. And, and, and that's it's just basically one huge trap. There is even a, an, an upper floor where everything is dark and the, the floor is filled with uh, cow traps and pieces of glass and whatnot. And the characters are just going to, to enter this dark floor and, and suffer uh, walking around searching. And, and there's actually nothing. There is not a single piece of treasure 
uh, inside this tower and that, that's why, why I think this adventure, the tower, the, the second part of this module uh, should only be used in sandbox campaigns because if you force your player characters to undertake this adventure they're going to be very angry because there's no treasure here and there's very little uh, opportunity for experience and there's a, a high probability of your characters um, to suffer a swift death in so if therefore if your characters are in a sandbox type campaign they're going to be oh why did we have to enter this tower of course it was too good to be true but if you force them at like oh today we are going to play the tower and then they're going to be to feel cheated like you force them into something that didn't have any rewards or anything and well my, my thought for for thoughts for both adventures they bo both work well but as i told you um it's it's depends very much on on your the type of adventures you are running because if you you're not playing a an old school game and the player characters will not like it if their char their characters the players will like it when their characters will die in a, such a swift and, and gruesome way in both adventures but if you like old school games and if you want that feeling of dread and despair and you want uh, creepiness to return to your games and manifested as, as undead and dark rituals you should definitely get this adventure death frost doom well thanks for watching my review if you have any comments or questions please uh, let me know see you later